Hello everyone, Nikhil this side from Coding Beam. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the JavaScript. So what is JavaScript? JavaScript is the most powerful programming language. It is the programming language that executes on the web browsers. So it converts the static HTML pages into a next level by dynamically updating the content, adding the some animations and form handling and some multimedia controls and much more. And what can you do with the javascript you can make web applications desktop application mobile applications real-time networking applications the command line application and games so these are things you can do with javascript and where does the javascript code runs it runs inside the web browsers and every web browser have a javascript engine to run the javascript code like the firefox have a spider monkey the chrome has a v8 engine the Safari has a Nitro and the Edge has a Chakra. Now, what is the JavaScript engine and the rendering engines? So the JavaScript engine is a program or an interpreter which executes the JavaScript code. Actually, it helps to interpret the JavaScript code of your website before rendering it in front of your audience. The rendering engines are often used interchangeably with the browser engines as the browser engines are the layout engines and the rendering engines is often used interchangeably with the browser engines and it is responsible for the layout of your website in front of the audience like the text, images and the media. And what is the ECMAScript and why do we use it? The ECMAScript is a non-profit organization that creates the standards for the technologies and the ECMA publishes the specification for the scripting languages and is called as an ECMA script. But why do we need that? To standardize the execution of the JavaScript code and to achieve the same functionality on all JavaScript browsers. The JavaScript was developed to execute on the web browsers and there are so many different web browsers from the different companies. So there was a need to standardize the execution of the JavaScript code to achieve the same functionality over all JavaScript browsers. So that's why the ECMAScript came into the picture. So this is all about the JavaScript. Now we will move on to the tutorials of the JavaScript and the hands-on. So thank you guys for watching the video and I hope you will like the video. And guys, please subscribe if you are new. Hello everyone, Nikhil this side from Coding Beam. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the JavaScript variables and the data types. So what are the JavaScript variables? The JavaScript variables are used to store the data in the memory, which later on we can update its value and there should always be a unique name for the variables and why do we need them to store the temporary data in the memory which will be deleted after the execution of the program and to perform various calculations and some operations and sometimes to store the data in the database so that's why we need the variables but how can we declare them so to declare the variable there is a reserved keyword which is a where and then the variable name will be there and then one two three equals to value so the where, let or const is the keyword to declare the variables in the JavaScript and let and const are introduced in the ES6 as the new definition to create the variables. So now my where is the variable name, 123 is the value of my where. So this is how we can declare the variables. So now let us see in the Visual Studio code via the example. So now we are in the Visual Studio code. Now we will declare a variable here like if we will declare it with the where as it is a reserved keyword and it will be the now the variable name like the my where and it is equals to one two three now we have declared a variable with where keyword now this is a keyword here this is the variable name and this is the value if i will now use the console.log to print the value in the console now it will be the my where if i will now save now you will see 1, 2, 3 in the console as expected. Now we have shown in the PPT like we can change the value of it also. Like if we have to change it, we have to use my where and assign it to a new value like 4, 5, 6. If I will now save, now you will see if I will now console.log and then my where and then you will see the console.log window will show 456 which is the updated value of my where so 456 is there in the console.log so 
This is how can we declare the variables and we can update their values in the JavaScript. And we can also declare the variables with let and the const as they are defined in the new ES6. So if I will declare a variable with let and it will be like the uh, variable like VAL and it will be equals to the 1, 2, 3. And then if I will now change value, the well equals to 4, 5, 6 or 3, 4, 5. If I will now console.log again, the well, now it will show me. I will now comment this code here before handling this. So if I will now run this, now the 3, 4, 5 will be in the console because we have declared the variable with 1, 2, 3 and we have updated the value with val equals to 3, 4, 5. So we are updating the value. But if we will use the const, we cannot update the value because it is a constant. So we cannot update their value in the const. So if I will declare with the const, so it will be the const val and it will be equals to 1, 2, 3. If I will now console.log, then it will show me in the, actually the V is missing. So it will show me in the console window. But if I will try to give a new value to this well, then it will give us an error like 3, 4, 5. Then it will give us an error if I will console.log like a well. So then it will give error like the type error assignment to a constant variable because the well is now the constant because it is declared with the const. So const value never changes or updates. So these are how we can declare the variables in the JavaScript. So now we will move on to different data types. So about the data types, the JavaScript provides the multiple data types to hold different type of values and it includes the data types like the string, the boolean and the number in case of int. And the JavaScript is a loosely and dynamically typed language. So we do not require to specify the type of a variable in JavaScript. So now there are two types of data types. There are the primitive types and the primitive types, they are the lowest level of data value. So they contain the string, number, boolean, null, undefined and the big int. And there are the non-primitive data types and they are the structural data types. And the structural data types contain some kind of structure with a primitive data. So it contains the object, the date, the arrays. So these are about the data types. So defining the data type, so we have to define the primitive data type now. So now there is a keyword, it is a let and the variable name it is equals to a. Then now this is the one. So now we are declaring a number here. If we are declaring a with a number, numerical digit, so it is a number. And if we are declaring a very big number, then it is called as a big int. So now there is a big int. And if we are declaring it within a keywords like the double keywords or a, or a backtick sign, so then it will be a string. And if we are giving a new value like a true or false, then it contains a boolean because boolean value contains a true or false. And there is a null also because if we are actually the null denotes the absence of a value. So the null will be the absence of a value in the JavaScript. And if we are defining with the undefined, so the undefined is a default value of a variable. Like if we declare a variable and we do not assign a value to it, so then it will be the undefined. So a variable in JavaScript can be assigned to any type of value. So then if we define a non-primitive types, so then there will be the object like the A is now an object. The first name is equals to John, the last name equals to switch. And then they have a key value pair, then it is object. And there is a new date variable like the date is now the primitive data type in the JavaScript. And we define the date and then we give it a string inside it. Then it will be a date and there is an array like if we have to declare an array, then it will be a non-primitive data type and it will be the structural data type. So the non-primitive data types contain some time kind of structure with the primitive data like the first name equals to now John, the last name equals to Swift and the array equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and it contains the multiple stories. So this is how can we define the non-primitive and the primitive data types in the JavaScript. So now we will move on to the Visual Studio Code to see the example. And now we are in the Visual Studio code. Now we will define a variable with the data type. So now if we will define it with the where, it will be equals to the value 
then it is equals to the one then if i will now console.log the number the well and if i will now save then it is equals to one so if i have to see the type of the variable like the which type of variable it is so we have to use again the console.log then it will be a type of it will be equal to type of and then it contains the then we have to give the variable name and it, it will be equals to the value so the value so if i will now console.log now we will see the number here because the type of give us the value like the number is there the one equals to the number so it is the number and if i will now change the variable like if i will now give it a string like value equals to the one two three or in the string like the name then if i will now save and console.log if i will now comment this out and then because it will not mismatch here i will now comment this now we will console.log the well now we will see the my name in the console window because we are declaring a variable with the one and we are giving it a new value so now it is a string value as we have defined in within the queues so this is the string value so if we have to console.log the type of this then again we have to use i type of and then the well which is the variable name if i will now console.log now we will see it is a string so these are the string so now if we will go ahead and if now we will give a new value like now if we have to give a boolean value so we have to provide val equals to true so now true or false they are the boolean values so if i will give it a true then if i will console.log the val and the type of the well and if i will now console.log now we will see the true and the type of is the boolean so if i will now again console.log the new variables like if i will now comment this out and i will increase the size a little bit and now now if we give a new value like here is an undefined keyword also if we will define a variable like where value equals to 1 and well my name equals to this if i will now define a new one like well where and it will be my where and if we will leave it undefined then if i will now console.log my where then it will be the undefined in the console window and if i will now console.log the type of and the my where then also it will give us the undefined because it is a type of the undefined and now if we will move on to the null and if i will comment this out where my where and it will be equals to now the null then if i will now console.log the my where then it will give us the null in the console window because we have declared it with the null and then if i will now console.log the type of the my where then it will give us the object because null is an object in the javascript so it will give us the object if i will now save then it is giving us the object so these are about the primitive types so now we will move on to the non primitive data types so if i will now declare a new object let person object name equals to the object now it is the empty object and the objects can contain multiple variables inside it as the key value pairs so the first name will be like the john and last name will be the smith and the age will be like 29 and if we have to access these values we have to again use the console.log and then object name 
and then you will see the object will be there in the console window now the first name is there the last name is there and the age is there and if we have to access like only the first name so then we have to use the dot notation here person dot first name so then it will give us the object there like the john is the first name and now if now we will move on to the date can declare a new date with the where new date where date equals to new date and then inside it we can give a new date in the string format like the 15th September 2021 if I will now save now you will see if I will now console.log the date then you will see the new date will be there the Wednesday 15 September 2021 it is a new date so if I will now declare a new one with the array so if we will declare an array where again where array equals to array and it contains in this format so this is a syntax and the array can have the multiple values of the same data types inside it like the numbers like the one two three four five and if we have to throw the array in the console, we have to use again the console.log and the array. Then it will give us the array like the they have the five elements like the one, two, three, four, five. So these are the zero, one, two, three, four. So thank you guys for watching the video and I hope you will like the video. And guys, please subscribe to our channel if you are new. Hello everyone, Nikhil this side from Coding Beam. So in this video, we are going to learn about the conditions or the conditional statements in the JavaScript. So what are the conditional statements? The conditional statements are used to verify the actions for the different conditions. And they are used to control the flow of the program. But why do we need the conditional statements? So if I will go to the Visual Studio code and if I have the, there an example about the temperature that if the temperature is less than 20 then it will be cold outside so we have to print the cold and if the temperature is greater than 20 and the temperature is less than 30 then it will be moderate outside and if the temperature will be greater than 30 then it is hot outside so to perform this example we will declare a new temperature variable with this temperature equals to for now it is 20 or 15 so if there is a condition like if the temperature is less than 20 then the, it, we will console.log that it is cold but if and if the temperature is greater than 20 and operator it is the end operator and the temperature is less than 30 So we will console.log that it is moderate outside. But if we will perform another if condition like if the temperature is greater than 30 then we will console.log that it is hot. So if I will now save then we will see the cold because now the temperature is 15 but if I will now change this to 25 then we will see the moderate air so because now the temperature is greater than 20 and the temperature is less than 30 so that's why we are gonna see the moderate air so these are why do we need the conditional statements to perform specific task for a specific conditions so there are the types of conditional statements the if condition is there like it executes some things based on a condition and we have seen an example of this and now about the else condition so it executes something when the if condition evaluates to false so about the else condition if I will go here and if I will just do here the else part like if the else and and if I will remove this if condition like if the temperature is greater than 30 and it is temperature also temperature and the temperature is less than 40 then it will be hot outside so now after this else statement if we will console.log that and if the temperature is like 50 here then 
the else statement will perform like it is very hot outside if i will now save then you will see this else part will run because now the temperature is 50 because none of these conditions will be satisfied and the else condition will run because these all if condition are set to false so the else condition will run at this time now because the temperature is 50 so these are about how can we use the if else conditions so now there is the else if condition so they are used to apply the second condition after the if statements so after this if we can now go to the visual studio code again so except this is we can also perform a else if like the else if else if the temperature is greater than 20 or the else if again is the temperature is there so then if i will now save and if the temperature is now again the 20 or the 25 then you will see this part will run because now the else if is there to perform a second level check on the if condition like if then else if and again the else if then again the else so these are about how can we use the else if conditions in the javascript if we have an another condition like if we have another condition to remove this i will remove this now if there is an example that if the user is logged in and the email is verified and he has the card details so he or she will be allowed to make a payment so to perform this we will just declare three variables like the let is logged in and equals to false and again the let is email verified equals to the false and again the let has card details equals to the false so if we have to perform this check we need to use the if else statements this is the example of the nested if statements so about this if the user is logged in so then we will uh, we will console.log that he is logged in so then after in this if condition after the console.log if we have another check for the if like inside the if we have another check if the email is verified then we will console.log that the email is verified but inside this email verified if if we have another if like another has card details then we will log con console.log that he has car card details he has all details and allowed to make payment this will be allowed so then in the else part if i will use the else so then it will be console.log that the not allowed to make payment so when i will run this so then you will see in the console.log that the not allowed to make payment because none of these conditions we will be satisfied but if all of these are true then you will see all details will be here like logged in he has the email verified and he has the all details and they are allowed to make payment so these are about how can we use nested if else statements in the javascript so now so now if we have to perform it via the end operator via this operator so then we need to use like the if the is logged in and if the email is verified and the has card details then console.log that he or she allowed to make payment so then it will be allowed to make a payment and the else we will use console.log they are not allowed so if i will now save then you will see allowed to make a payment because all of the conditions are now true so if one of these will be false then you will see these are it will be false that now it will be go to the not allowed so these are about how can we use the and operator within the if statements so now the next type of condition is the switch statement so it executes something based on the return value of a specified expression so if i will now go to the visual studio code once again so if there is an example 
so now if the company has four departments like the one is hr payroll development and marketing so if an employee is in hr then we will show that he is in hr or if an employee is in development then we will show he is in development so to reform this we will just declare a new variable that the employee profile so equals to the hr so then if i will now use the switch here like the switch and and there will be the employee profile inside the switch lo so after this if the employee like we will write a new case here like case it is the hr so then we will console.log that he is in hr department and after this we will break the statements so i will just copy here this part so then if the case is hr then we will console.log the hr department so now if the case is development then we will show console.log that he is in development department and the if an employee if the case is now in the marketing then we will show he is in the marketing department and if the employee is in the payroll then we will show con via the console.log that he is in payroll department so if i will now save then you will see employee profile is the hr so this case will run at this time so he is in hr department but if the employee is in development so this case will run that he is in the development department so now if there is the another case like the payroll then it will show us that he is in the payroll department but if there is a default case also like if he is unallocated we will use a default case like the default so at the default case we will console.log that he is unallocated so now if the employee profile is now blank so then he will be in the unallocated department so these are about how can we use the switch statements and the conditional statements in the javascript so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel if you are new hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to discuss about the loops in the javascript so what are the loops loops are used to execute a block of code again and again it is used to automate a process we give it a condition and then it executes it till the conditions are met so why do we need them to save the time for a repetitive task so now we will see it in the visual studio code that why actually do we need them so now we are in the visual studio code and now if i have to print numbers from 1 to 10 then if we have to do it in the javascript without the loops so we have to use the console.log 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 again and again like this so we have to do like this like and 10 so if i will now console.log and i if i will now save then you will see 1 2 3 4 5 till the 10 will be in the console window but if i want from the numbers from 1 to 100 then it will be difficult for us so that's why the loops came into the picture so now if i will try with the for loop with the for and if i will now use it like the let i equals to 1 i less than equals to 100 then i plus plus so then if i will now console dot log the i then it will print numbers from 1 to 100 in the console window so these are why do we need the loops to save our time for the repetitive task so now we will see the type of loops we have in the javascript so now the first one is the for loop so it loops through a block of code for a condition so if i will now go to the visual studio code once again and then you will see we have implemented the for loop here but about the syntax so about the syntax so we have to give for and then it is a initialization and then there is the condition and then there is a increment or decrement and then there will be the code 
which we have to execute within this loop. So now if I want to print numbers from 1 to 100 then first I have to first initialize it. So then it will be let i equals to 0 and then then the condition like i less than equals to 100 and then i will be incrementing the i value so then if i will now console.log the i then it will show us 1 to 100 in the console window so then you will see 1 to 100 will be console window so if you want from the 1 then initialize from the 1 so then you will see it will be from 1 to 100 so these are about how can we use the for loop so now the next one is the for in loop and it loops through the properties of an object so the for in loop is a special type of loop that iterates over the properties of an object or the elements of an array so about this if i will now go to the visual studio code so now you will see here we have a const car object so if i have to iterate over the properties of the car so then it would be for let and then it will be the let i in the car so then if i will now print the i so then it will show us the keys of the object but if i have to print the values also then we have to print via the console.log and it will be car at i so then it will print us the value of the i so then it will be first first there is a so if i will now comment this out so first there will be the car i is the make and then model then the price so these are about how can we use the for in loops in the javascript first we have to declare the variable and then the in keyword and then of the car object so these are about how can we use the for in loop so now the next type of loop is is the for of loop and it loops through the iterable objects like the arrays or the strings and the for of loop was introduced in the es6 so if i have now an array like the array array if i will now remove everything first so then if i have the array like the const array or the con cities cities array equals to the so now we have an array of the delhi mumbai kolkata chennai of the strings and of the cities so if i have to iterate over this array so i need to use the four the four con city of the cities and then there will be the console.log the city so then then you will see the cities in the console window so these are about how can we use the for of loop so now we will see about the while loops so about the while loops they loops as long as the condition evaluates to true so the while loop loops through a block of code as long as the specified condition evaluates to true and once the condition will fail the loop will be stopped so now we will see it in the visual studio code that how can we demonstrate the while loop so if i have now so if i have the let i equals to the one so if i have now a while loop that till the i not equals to the 100 or the 10 then it will be incremented once we have to console.log the i and then it will be incremented so then after the 10 times it will be stopped so you will see from 1 to 9 1 to 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it will be stopped but if i will now do here the equals to also then it will print till the 10 so these are about how can we use the while loop so now about the do while loops it loops once and then the condition is evaluated and then it verifies the condition and then loops again so about the do while loop it is the variant of the while loop which evaluates the condition at the end of each loop iteration and with a do while loop a block of code is executed once and then the condition is evaluated and then if the condition is true the statement will be repeated once we have specified the number of it so now if i have to provide like if the age or like if let i equals to the one and then we have first to perform the do and then after writing the do we can log console.log the value of i and 
we can just increment the i so after the do block then we can perform the while the while and it will include the condition in it while i less than or 5 so then we will see 1 2 3 4 in the console window because i is less than 5 every time but if i will now remove this or if i will now do here this time like i is greater than 5 then it will be executed still for the ones so then you will see the one in the console window and the condition is not met here so the loop will not continue but it will run one time here so these are about the how can we use the loops in the javascript so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel if you are new hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to learn about the functions in the javascript so the functions are a set of statements that performs a task. It allows us to define a block of code and then we give it a name and then we execute it as many times as we need. The keyword function is used to define the functions in the JavaScript and we can perform the same actions in many places of the code. So this is the use of the function. So how can we declare the function? So below is the syntax to declare the function in the JavaScript. So, so first there will be the function keyword and then the function name and then the body will be there and in these brackets you can add some parameters also so the function is the keyword the function name is the name given to be the function and the function body is there and it contains some code which we want to add inside the function and the parameters inside these brackets we may add some parameters for the function so this is how the functions can be declared so now we will see it in the code so now we will go to the Visual Studio code and in the index.js. So now we will open the console here and if we will type the console.log and yes it is working here. So now we have to declare the function here. So to declare the function as we saw in the ppt there is the function keyword here and then the function name and then the parenthesis and then the body. So the same will be followed here the function name the function keyword will be there and then the function name will be there like in my case it, it will be the display and then the function body will be there and in the body we will declare a message so the console.log and it will be the hello world so now we have to call the function here so to call the function we have to give the same name of the function like the display and then we will call it so now if we will say now we will see the hello world here in the console because we have now called this function and as we discussed we can use it multiple times so we will now call the function multiple times so i will call the display here again and again so now you will see the hello world is here with it two times so this is how we can declare the functions in the javascript so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video thank you guys hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to learn about the types of functions in the javascript so now there are three types of functions there are the named functions there are the anonymous functions and there are the arrow functions and now about the name functions they are defined using the function keyword followed by the function name and the function parameters are listed inside the parenthesis so we add the parameters inside the parenthesis and the function parameters behave like the local variables and they have the local scope so now we will see how can we demonstrate the named function so now we are in the visual studio code now we will declare a function there with the function keyword and it will be the named function so i will go in the visual studio code and i will declare a new function and it will be the print and then the parenthesis and then the curly braces so now we will log a message in the console so i will console.log and then i will print a name in the console and it will be the john and then we will call the print function so then you will see the john in the console so now if we have to add some parameters in the function like if we add a name in the function here like the name and instead of the john we will now console.log the name variable so it will be the name 
so now if now you will save you you will see the undefined error because the name we have declared here and we are not providing any value to the name and we are just printing the value so now if now we will save you will see the undefined here because we are not providing any value here so now to provide a value we have to provide an argument while calling the function so now there is the name and it will be in the sequence order so now the name and it will be the john and now this john is the value of this name this john will be the value of this name so then if now we will say you will see the john in the console as expected the john is here and now if my function doesn't print anything but it does return so now we will instead of console.log we will now return just name so since the return type function they they return a value so then the print function is there it has the parameter with the name and it is returning the name so the function is returning something and we have to get here from a variable here like if now we will console.log dot log and we have to call the print function inside the console dot log because it the function is returning something so we have to go to the print and then we have to provide an uh, an argument here like the john if now we will save the john is still here because because now we are returning something in the function and then we are giving the value we are console dot logging the return value from this function so the return value will be in the string and then it will return the value in the console so this is how the name functions works so now we will move on to the anonymous functions and here are the anonymous function or the function expression so the anonymous functions they are also known as the function expression the function expression is very similar to the named function and it may be defined as a named or an anonymous function so it can be defined as a name or an anonymous function the anonymous function does not contain a name and it does not contain a name because it contains a variable inside it so the function can be invoked by using an expression name and not by the function name so we declare a variable and then we declare the function to that variable so now we will see the demo of it inside the code so now we are in the visual studio code now we will declare a name function uh, now we will declare an anonymous function here so anonymous function is declared by a variable so we will declare a variable and it will be by the let and then the function name it will be the print and then equals to and then there will be the function keyword and then the parenthesis and then the curly brace so this is the syntax to declare a function expression or the anonymous function so this is how an anonymous function syntax is so then and it is very similar to the name functions because in the name functions we just declare the function and their name like the print and then the curly brace and then the body here so this is how the name functions works and this is how the anonymous function works and they are very similar so then we will now console.log and we will just display a john here also and then we have to print we have to call the print function here so print and then parenthesis and then you will see the console.log john in the console.log window so then if now we have to return something here like if we have to return the name and to provide an arguments and to provide the parameters to the function we have to provide the parameters inside this because these are the parentheses so we will provide the name here and then we will console.log the name or just we can now return the name because it will return something and we have to catch the return value here so it will just return and it will be the name and then we will now while calling the print function now we have to and now here we can now because it is an anonymous function so we can now declare a new value like the cons and it will be the function name like the result 
and it is a variable sorry so then we will now call the print function inside this for the print and then the arguments will be the john and now if i will now console.log the result variable here so then you will see the john in the console window so now if i can change any value here like the smith so then you will see the smith inside the console.log window because we are declaring a new variable result with the function calling and this variable gets the value from this function smith from from this function print because it returns the value which, which we are providing here so it is returning something and it is getting the value of this function so then so now we will see about the function expression so to declare the function in the function expression we have to declare a new variable and then it will be the like the display in this case and then there will be the name function inside the variable so this is how the function expression works there will be the name function inside the variable so there will be the name so the function it will be the name like the show and then the parenthesis and then the curly brace will be there and then we will lock a message in the console so there will be use console.log and then the message will be hello world now if we have to call this function we have to call from the variable name like the display we have to call from the display and we are declaring the function with the function show and we are giving the function to this variable so this variable hold this function so we have to call from the display so we have to call from the display and whenever we call if now we will save we will now see the hello world in the console window because we have now declared a variable which is the display and it contains the function show so this holds this function so this is how we can use the function expression this is the function expression so now there is a question that why would we use the anonymous function because in the function expression we are using the variable and then now we are declaring the function and now we are calling it from the variable name and not from the function name so sometimes the show here like the show here is of no use so sometimes it can be confusing so that's why we are using the anonymous function so here we just have to declare the function keyword and it identifies that this is the anonymous function and then it can be confusing so and in the anonymous function we can also use some callbacks also and we will be using it in the further videos so then now we will now move on to the arrow functions so they are supported in the es6 and they are very similar to the function expression but they have the shorter syntax than the function expression and they are defined by using the parenthesis and that contains some parameters and it is followed by then arrow and if we will not add any curly brace so the first line will be automatically returned in this function so now if we will see it in the code so now to declare an arrow function we have to declare a variable again as it is similar to the function expression the variable here with the print and then there will be the parenthesis and then the arrow so this is how we can declare a an arrow function so this is the syntax to declare an arrow function so then there in the function so there we can console.log and it will be the display message and it will be the hello world and if we have to call we have to call via the print and then the hello world will be there in the console window so then if we have to add some parameters here we have to add here because the parentheses are here so here the name is here and the age is here and then we have to give the arguments name and age arguments where will be the name will be the john and the age will be 25 and now if we have to save then you will see the john and 25 there in the console so as expected the john and 25 is here so this is how we can declare the arrow functions and if we have to use the return statement here and if the return and then the name plus there will be the empty string and then there will be the age and then we have to use the console.log here so we have to use the console.log and then it will be the print 
and the arguments inside it so the name will be the john and the age will be the so this is how the arrow function works so these are the types of the functions so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and please subscribe to our channel also okay bye hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to learn about the objects in the javascript so in javascript an object is a non primitive or a structured data type almost everything in javascript is considered as an object because the javascript is an object based language objects can hold the multiple values and it can be some properties some methods and all and there are some examples there can be the date strings and the functions the functions are also considered as an object in the javascript so now we will see how can we declare an object in the javascript so how to declare the objects the first one is using an object literal so we create a variable like there is a car and then there are its properties so the make is there the honda the model is there is the civic and the year is there is it 2011 so we are creating the key value pairs the key is the make model year and the values are honda civic and 2011 so now we will see how can we declare an object using the object literal so now we are in the visual studio code now we will see how can we declare the object now we will create a new variable here like a car and then it will be in the object so now we will declare some properties of the car now there will be the make and it will be the honda and then there will be the model and then it will be the civic and then there can be the year and it can be 2011 and then there can be a price and it can be around 2 lakhs so this is how can we declare an object in the javascript so now if now we will directly console.log and now if i will console.log the car object so now you will see all of its properties and the key value pairs will be there in the console.log window so if i will now save now you will see the make is the honda the model is the civic the price equals to this the year equals to this so this is how we can create the object using the object literal so now if we have to if we have to update an update a property in the car so then we can use the car dot make and it can be and it can be instead of the honda we can create a hyundai and the car dot model and it can be the i10 so now if now we will save and then we will now console dot log only the make and the model of the car so now we have to do the car and the dot and the make will be there and then comma again the car and then it will be the model so now if now we will say we will see the car make equals to hyundai and the model will be the i10 now so now you can see the hyundai is there the make and the model equals to y10 so this is how we can update the properties in the object so now there is another way to update the properties now we can update the properties with the black brackets so then we have to use the car and then the bracket and then we have to provide the property here like the make we will provide here the make and it will be in the string so then equals to then it will be the and it will be again the like bmw and now if now we will save and now we will console dot log now you will see the car dot make will be the bmw here 
so now i have saved now you will see the car dot make is bmw so these are the two ways where we can update the properties of the car so now this this is the object the car and and we are updating the properties with the dot and there with the brackets so this is how we can declare an object with the object literal and now there is another way with using the javascript new object constructor so now if we see an example there there is a let bike we are declaring a new variable and we are giving it the value as an object it's a new object and now we are declaring the properties like bike dot make bike dot model and the bike dot year so now if we will now see it in the code we will go to the index.js and now i will remove all of this now we are in the visual studio code now we will create a new object with the javascript new object constructor so the let and there will be the car and it will be the new and the object so now we are creating a new instance of the object in the car so now we will declare the properties so the car dot make equals to honda so this is how can we declare the properties using the new object constructor the car dot make the car dot model and it will be the civic and again car dot price and it will be 2 lakhs car dot year it will be 2011 so now if now we will console dot log the car now you will see the car objects properties and key value pairs here so now you will see the make honda the model the price and the year so now this, this is how can we declare the car object with the javascript new object constructor so now if we have to update the value we have to directly click on the car we have to directly type the car dot property which is the make and then override the value to like the bmw so now if we will console dot log just the car just the car dot only the make and then you will see the bmw is here because we are now console dot logging only the car dot make after updating the value of the car so this is how can we declare objects in the class and there is a one more method to declare the object in the car so we have to declare a new function here like the function as i told earlier that the javascript functions are also considered as an object so there is a function like get details and it will be the and it will contain some parameters like the make the model the year and the price and after this we will now use so this this dot make equals to the make and now the this dot model equals to the model this dot year equals to the year and this dot price equals to the price so now we can create a new instance here with the let and it will be the new variable like the car again and it will be the get details the new get details and we will provide some values here in the constructor like the make is equal to honda so i will maximize it it will be the make and it will be the honda and it will be the civic and now the year will be 2011 and then the price will be 2 lakh so now if i will console dot log the car now you will see the car object and all their properties will be there in the console window so there you can see the get details so guys thank you for watching the video and i hope you will like it and guys please subscribe to our channel okay bye hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to learn about the classes in the javascript so the javascript do not have any class the javascript classes does not support the full oops concepts like the java and the c sharp and in the javascript 
as i told earlier that the functions are considered as the classes and we use the functions instead of the classes in the javascript so how can we declare the class so this is the syntax to declare the class there will be the function keyword and then there will be the name of the class and it will be in the pascal naming convention so now that this dot make this is a new property of the class and this does not and this dot model here this is also the new property of the class so this is how can we declare the classes in the javascript so now we will see directly it in the code via the practical way so now we are in the visual studio code now we will declare a new class here with the function keyword it will be the function and then there there will be the name of the class in the pascal naming convention so there will be the car and then the parenthesis and then we will create new properties like this dot make equals to honda now this dot model equals to civic now this dot price equals to 2 lakhs now this dot year and it will be 2020 so now the honda is here without the semicolon so i will add it so now we have declared a new class with this dot make this dot model the price and the year so these are properties of the class so now if we have to access these properties we have to create a new instance of the class so we will now create a new very variable it will be the let and it will be the car and it is in the smaller naming convention so now there will be the new car and then we have created a new object of the class so now we have to access its properties so the car we will now console.log the car dot make or all things so now if we will now console dot log car now you will see the car is the class here and then the make honda the model is the civic the price is 2 lakh the year is 2020 so now if we have to access the properties like the make and the car dot model so now the make and model will be there like the honda and the civic so now this is how can we create a class in the javascript so then so guys now we can also create some methods in the clause like if we have to have to declare a new method here we, we will declare with that this dot get details so it will be the equals to and then there will be the function keyword as we saw in the function types so there will be the anonymous function so there will be the function keyword and then there will be the parenthesis and then this so now we will return the make plus this dot plus or space there will be the space so there there will be the string with the space and then this this dot model then again the space and then this dot i will maximize so now it will be this dot price and again the space and now again this dot year and then semicolon so now if we will call the get details function here instead of the this so now the car dot get details and now if now we will save it now in the console in the console now actually the live live server is not running here so i have to go to the index.html and i will open the live server so now so now in the console now you will see the honda civic so now in the console you will see the honda civic the price and the year 
so this is how can we declare the methods in the class and now if we have to declare the constructors also so there if i have to create the new constructors like the make is here the model is here the price is here and the year is here and then if i will remove this or i will directly click on this here like the honda it will be the make and instead of the model it will be the model here and now instead of the price it will be the price keyword price variable and then now instead of this it will be the year and then we will return the get details function from this and now if we have and now if we are creating a new instance of it we have to now call the constructor here and then we have to provide the details like the make it will be the honda and now it will be the civic then again the price it will be 2 lakhs and then the year it will be 2011 and now if i will save now we will see the same output again as we saw in the previous output so this is how can we declare the class and their constructors in the javascript so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel also okay bye hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to learn about the get and set properties in the javascript and in the previous video we have learned about the class and now it's time to learn the properties there so it is an association between a name or a key and a value actually in javascript an object is a collection of properties where each property contains a key value pair a properties value can be a functions or a variables in a read only property we do not specify the set function because the set function is used to set a value in the write only property we do not specify the get function and in both we need to specify both get and set functions and how to define properties so below is the syntax to define the properties there will be the object dot define properties and then the first argument will be the this and it will be the current object and then there there will be the objects so then now the first name is here is the property name and we have defined it in the keywords and it will be a string and then there will be the get and set functions there the get is returning the variable and it is the first name as the first name is a variable declared in the object and set is setting a new value to this variable so this is how can we declare the properties in the javascript so now we will move on to the visual studio code to to demonstrate this now we are in the visual studio code now we will declare an object and it will be a car again function car and then we will declare two variables here first one will be the make and then it will be the honda the second one will be the model and it will be the city and then we need to specify the properties also to get and set the values so the object dot define properties and the first one it will contain the car object so we will now directly go to the this so then the second object will be there and then in this object we have to define the properties like if we have to define the make so it will be in the string and it will be the make and then and now we have to specify the get and it will be the and in this there will be an anonymous function and then we will return the make value here the make which is the variable we have declared here so now in the make property it is now returning the make variable so now can now define the set function also there will be the set and then the key value pair and then again an anonymous function but this anonymous function will get a value as an argument so we so we will define a parameter and then we will just set the make to this value 
so then the value will be now the make will be now this value and now if we are if we have to instantiate that so there will be the const car equals to new car object and then if we have to access the car the make variable or the make property of the car so we have to console dot log so then there will be the make like the car dot make so now if we will console dot log now probably we will see the honda in the console so if i will console dot log so now you will see the honda is there as expected so now if we have to set a new value to this make we have to go again and then we can now set by the car dot make and it will be the like the hyundai and now if i will console dot log again now you will see the hyundai will be there the first there will be the honda and then there will be the hyundai so now we have declared the both read and write only properties so then if we have just to declare the read only so we have to go to this make and then i will make this model variable and and it will be the read only only so it will be the read only so new property will be the model and then we will just get the value by the key value pair and the anonymous function and it will return us the value of the model so now so now if i will now save and if i will now console dot log again the car dot and it will be now the model and if i will now console dot log now we have now we will uh we will now see here the city because we have declared the model as a city here so now the city is in the console window so now if we have to declare only the write only property so we have to go and we can now declare only the let and it will be the date like the year and it will be the 20 20 and if we have to declare the write only then we have to set we have to give only the set variable here and it will be the set and it will contain only the set in the anonymous function and the function will contain a parameter and it will be the value and then we can now set the value of the year which name i have declared is uh, i forgot to add the underscore so then the year equals to the value so now these are the properties so now if i will save in very left hand side in assignment i think there is an error i think so i have to see the year equals to value so this this was the error so we have to declare by this and now the error will be gone so now if i will now console dot log the car dot year now we will now we will see the undefined because it is not getting the value because we haven't specified the get function here so we are so now the this pro property is returning the undefined to us in the console window but then we can set this property by this car dot year equals to 2020 one or anything but it will give us the undefined whenever we get this variable here by get this property so these are the so the model is the read only property and the year is write only property so these are about the properties so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys Please subscribe to our channel if you are new. Okay.
Hello everyone, Nikhil this site from Coding Beam. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the prototype in JavaScript. So it is an object that is associated with every function or object in the JavaScript. And it allows us to add properties and methods to an object dynamically. And every function in the JavaScript includes prototype object by default. And where the function prototype property is accessible and modifiable and the object's prototype property is not visible at all. But why do we need them? So the answer is to dynamically add properties to an object or a function in the JavaScript. So now we will see in the code that why actually we will need that. So now we will see why do we need them. So we will create a function, the car. And if I will now create some new properties, this dot make and this dot model equals to city if i will now save and if i will now create a new instance const car1 equals to new car and if i will now give a new property like the car1 dot year equals to 2020 and if i will now console.log the car one dot year then we will see in the console window that it is 2020 but if i will now create a new instance car2 and it will be equals to the new car object and then if i will now console.log the year property from the car2 then do you know what it will show it will show us undefined because we have cre created the year property only in the car one instance and not here so if i will now try to add here also like the car two year and it will be equals to the 2020 then it will show us 2020 in the console window because now we have created the year in the two instance in the car two instance so that's why we need the prototype so because so how do we need them so to dynamically add properties to an object or a function in the javascript so how to define a prototype in the javascript there is a syntax that car the object name dot prototype and dot property name and equals to the value so this will add a new property to, to this object and anyone can access this property from this car object only so car is the function and the car dot prototype is dynamically adding new property to the car object. So now we will see in the Visual Studio code again that how can we define prototype. So now we will go to Visual Studio code and now if I will now define a new property directly after declaring the object and it will be the car dot prototype dot like the if I want to now discuss the date it will be like the 20 or if i will now do just one thing here it will be the price it will be 2 lakhs now if i will now save and if i will now try to access from the car1 instance so there will be car1 dot here or the console dot log and i will remove this car1 dot here from both the sides so now even this year then if i will try to access the car1 by the console.log like if i want to access the car1 dot price and then it will show us 2 lakh rupees and here also if i will try to access console.log then it will show us 20 then then it will show us 2 lakh rupees here also so now we have added this prototype property via the main option via the prototype object dot prototype so now if i will declare a new property here with the car dot prototype and dot year which we have declared before and it will be the 2020 and then 
we can now access it from any instance like the console.log car1 dot ear and then again here also car2 dot ear so this will be wrapped in the console.log So then you will see 2020 this 2 lakhs and then again 2020 from car 2 and then 2 lakhs and d1 also we can also declare the method also from here like the car car dot prototype dot the name of the method and it will be like the get all details then it will be equals to the anonymous function now we will take an anonymous function and then we will return like this dot make plus space white space and again this dot model then again white space i will maximize it and then again this dot uh, year then again white space and again this dot price then if I will now uh, then if I, I will now use this get all detail functions here in the in any instance like here in the car1 I will now remove this console dot log from here and from here also if I will now try to access the car1 or so if I will console.log directly the car1.get all details and here also if I will try to access log car2.get all details then it will show us all the details of the car from both the instances. So these are how can we declare the prototypes in the JavaScript and how can we declare the methods inside the prototypes in JavaScript. So these are about them. So thank you guys for watching the video and I hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel if you are new. Hello everyone Nikhil this side from Coding Beam. So in this video we are going to discuss about the closures in the JavaScript. So the closures are one of the most important concept in the JavaScript but what are they? So the closures means that the child function has access to the variables and the parameters which are defined in the parent function and even after the parent function has been called. So the inner function has access to the outer and even the global variable scopes. So these are about the closures and why do we need them to access the parameters to access the variables which are declared outside like if we have a calculator to calculate sometimes we have a function and sometimes we have the variables which are declared outside so we have to calculate the variables and then we have to return the statement so sometimes we need the closures for that so how then we need that so there are the closures chain so the closures have access to its own scope the first one and it has access to its outer function scope as well and it has access to the global scope as well so they have the three chain they have a chain of three items so they have the access to its sound scope they have the access to its outer function scope they have the access to the global scope also so now we will see it in the visual studio code that how can we demonstrate about the closures in the javascript so now in the visual studio code if i will declare a new function here like the function will be the outer function first and then the parameters will be blank as of now and if i will declare a new variable here and the variable will be counter and it will be equals to the one so if i will declare a one more variable here and it will be the function again and it will be again the inner because now we are defining an inner function so now if i will declare a one more variable here and it will be the inner counter and if it is equals to the zero as well zero and if the counter is also zero in the start so then if now we will increment both the counters here with the counter plus plus 
and also the inner counter after removing this error sign here and then if I will now console.log that we have no the counter about the counter and we have to console.log the inner counter as well so the inner counter also so if I will now call this inner outer function or if I will now just return this inner here return the inner so then if I will now go if I will now create a new variable and it will be equals to like the caller equals to the function which is the outer so these are about the anonymous function so we have declared a new anonymous function here with the function expression so if I will now call from the caller function then you will be seeing the counter will be incremented so now the 1 1 which we have declared from the 0 0 so both the counters are incremented and this counter is incremented from the inner function so now if I will now continue call this like the caller function again and again now you will see that the counter variable has incremented five times one two three four five and the inner counter is just redeclaring again and again because because every time we call it the child function will run and the parent function has given the reference to this caller function variable so the counter variable will be incrementing each time and the child function will be called each time so the child function will remain will start from the zero every time and it will remain static and it will increase every time so these are about the closures and how it works so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel if you are new hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beams so in this video we are going to discuss about the hoisting in javascript so what exactly is the hoisting so hoisting is a concept in which the variables and the functions can be used even before declaring them so we can use some variables and the functions even before declaring them also so the javascript compiler move these variables and the functions at the top so this is the default behavior of the javascript that moves the variables and the functions at the top of our code of the scope and the declarations of the variables only moves to the top and not the initialization because the initialization is done later in the code and the function definitions moves first even before the variables so the first they will be the functions and then the variables will be declarations after that and why do we need it so because the functions and the variables which are declared are moved to the top regardless of their scope so now we will see it in the code that why exactly do we need them and when do we need that so now we are in the visual studio code if i will now declare a new variable or if i will now directly assign the first name equals to the john and if i will now just console.log the first name the first name and if I will now declare the first name after initialization of the variable like the first name so then if I will now save then you will see the John in the console window because the variable declarations are moved to the top and if I will now declare a new function here with the function and then the get name and then the parameters will be blank and if I will now console.log that my name is John and now if I will now save and if I will now go before the functional declaration and the variable declaration as well and if I will now call the get name here then you will see it will be run because the function declarations are also moved to the top so these are about the hoisting and how it works so and about that if we are declaring a function expression like if we are declaring a new function via the variables like where runner equals to the get name so we are assigning the get name to the runner variable and if i will now remove this or if i will now change here the 
runner then if i will save then it will give us the error because in the javascript only the simple functions are hoisted and not the function expressions so these are about the hoisting and why do we need that because if we are building a real time application then sometimes we need that because the javascript is dynamically typed language so if we are declaring a new properties or some variables then we need that in the javascript so these are about the hosting in javascript and how it works and why we need that so about the hosting the variable declarations are moved to the top of any code in the javascript so the declaration moves to the top so these are about the javascript hosting so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel if you are new hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to discuss about the strict mode in javascript so what exactly is the strict mode so we all know that the javascript is a dynamically typed language so if you have worked with other programming languages like the java or the c sharp or c++ so you all know about the how strict they are in declaring like the variables so you can't use the variables before declaring them so how strict they are so if you expect the compiler to the same strictness in the javascript also so the strict mode is here to use so it allows us the strictness of the code in the javascript so it is a stricter version of the javascript and it was introduced in the es5 and it produces new errors for like the depreciated features and why do we need it because it increases the security and performance to help building the code quality of the code and to reduce the bugs and that's why we need the strict mode in the javascript and how to enable that via the use strict keyword in the javascript so you have to use in the keywords like the use strict's and if now you will use the brand equals to honda and we haven't declared it but it will give you an error that the brand is not defined so now we will see practically that how exactly it works and why do we need that so now we are in the visual studio code and now if i will now initialize a variable and give it a value like a equals to 1 and if i will now console dot log the value of a then it will show us the 1 in the console window because there is no any strictness in the code as of now but if i will now use here the use strict on the top of the code then if i will save then it will throw us an error that the a is not defined because we are in the strict mode now so if now if i will define the a like the var a so then it will be cleared so these are about the strict modes so it will increase the readability security and the quality of your code and it will decrease the confusing and the poorly written code in the javascript so now there are some restrictions in the strict mode and about them the undeclared variables are not allowed so we have seen the example of it so about the second one these are the deleting the variables or functions are not allowed so if i will go to the index.js and the developer tools and if i will now create a new object then there will be again the car an object and the make property it will the honda and the year it is a 2021 if i will now try to delete this object by the delete car then it will be okay without the strict mode but if i will now add the su strict at the top of the code then it will throw us an error that the delete of an unqualified identifier in the strict mode so about the third the duplicating the parameters name in the functions are not allowed so about the duplication in the parameters and function names if i will now declare a function and it will be again the get details and the parameters it will be like the a and again the a so then if i will now console dot log like the a plus and again the a then if i will now call this function like the get details it will throw us an error that the duplicate parameters and name are not allowed in the context so these are not allowed in the strict mode and again the eval cannot declare or modify variables and the functions in the javascript in the strict mode so if i will now go to the visual studio code and then you will see here we have the use strict and then here we have the eval function and it is declaring a new variable like let a equals to 1 and we are console.logging the a 
and then you will see there will be the reference error that the a is not defined because in the javascript in the strict mode eval cannot declare or modify any variables and the functions in the strict mode so the with statements are not allowed in the strict mode so about the with statements if i will now again go to the visual studio code and the developer tools and if i will now again with the with and the math so then if i will not declare initial a equals to the abs of the like 200 point one two three and there's three two and if i will now save then you will see there will be an error the strict mode cannot may include with a with statement so with statements are not allowed in the strict mode now the writing to the read only properties are not allowed so now if i will declare a new function again the car and again we have the let make equals to the honda and then if i will now use object dot define properties and then the this and then again there will be the name of the property like the make then if i will now just use here the get and it will be anonymous function as we saw in the object videos so about this if i will now just return only the make so if i will now save and if i will now create a new instance of it like the const c equals to the new car then if i will now assign a new value to the c dot make equals to the like the hyundai but in the strict mode so we have to use the strict mode on the top of the code by the strict mode use strict and if i will now save then you will see an error that cannot set the property make of the car which has only a getter so the octal numbers are also not allowed in the javascript so about the octal they start with the zero so if i will now go in the javascript code and if i will now remove this and it will be the let octal ot equals to like the zero three zero if i will now save then it will throw us an error that the octal literals are not allowed in the strict mode so they are also not allowed in the strict mode and if i will now go in the restrictions so there's the reserved keywords are also not allowed via the variable declarations of the function declarations so about that if i will declare a new variable like the four equals to like the one two three then if i will now save then it will throw us an error that unexpected strict mode was the reserved word so the four is the reserved keyword in the javascript which is used in the loops so these are about the restrictions and now so these are about the restrictions in the javascript so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel if you are new hello everyone nikhil this side from coding beam so in this video we are going to learn about the selecting elements in the javascript so what are the selecting elements so the selecting elements are used to modify or update the values of the html elements it helps us to dynamically update the content of the html and as we know that the javascript is a dynamically typed language so it will update the contents of the html page of some elements but why do we need them so for an example if we have an index.html5 and it contains two paragraph inside it so if i will now go to the chrome then you will see there there are two paragraph inside this html page but if i want to dynamically update the changes to the ui like if i need the night mode in it so i need to do i need to create a new button for it like the button and the on click will be having a function so on click equals to the function toggle mode and if i have to declare a new function inside the script tag it will be function toggle mode and it will be document dot body dot and it will be the style tag and then it will be background color equals to black and now document dot body dot style dot color 
of all elements will be white so the text color will be the white and then the background color will be black so if i will now run this and it will be night mode then if i will now save then you will see in the browser we have a new button and then if i will now click on it then you will see it contains now the night mode so these are about why do we need the selecting elements in the javascript to make the web pages dynamic so now there are some type of the selecting elements so the first one is the document dot get element by id so it will select an element by the id by its unique id and it will returns an element as an object so if i will now go to the visual studio code once again so then if we have to select an element by its id so we have to make a new element like we have a new paragraph here and it will be the id inside it attribute will be the id equals to the paragraph so then if i will now go here and if i will now comment this out or if i will now do this after this like the document like the selecting element by id so to select the element by id we need a new thing like we need to declare a new variable like let element elm equals to the document dot get element by id and it will be the name of the id like here we have a paragraph so i will copy this and i will paste this so then it will contains an object of this now and now if i have to change or if i have to do this like we want the background color of the paragraph to be the gray so then it would be element uh it would be element dot style dot background color or the background equals to gray so if i will now save then you will see the background color of the id the paragraph 1 will be gray because the paragraph because uh because only this paragraph has a new id which is the paragraph so only this paragraph will get reflected any changes in the ui so these are about how can we use the document dot get element by id in the javascript so if i need to make another change here like if i need to change the text of it so then it would be the uh, element dot inner html or inner text and it will be equals to the new text like we have updated dynamically dynamically updated text so if i will now save then you will see the text will be the dynamically updated text of it so now you will see the dynamically updated text so these are how and why can we use the documents dot get elements by id to select a unique element by its id and then update its content so now about the second term it is the document dot get elements by class name so about the documents dot get elements by class name it will select the all elements by the class name so if there are multiple elements with the same class name so it will select all the elements of the specific class names and it will returns the array like object so the difference between the id and the class name is it will return the object and it will return the array like object so about the document dot get elements by class name if i will now go to the visual studio code so here if i will now comment this out and after this if i will now do so after this if i will now declare a new class like accept the id if i will now declare a class so then now it has a new class paragraph and here also if i will now declare a new class like the class equals to the paragraph so now after this if i will now declare a new variable like let element equals to document dot get elements by class name and it will be in the paragraph like we have declared a paragraph class in the two paragraph text there so then it will create this and after this it if you will now console dot log the element then you will see in the console window that it is actually if i will now inspect this then you will see it is actually a collection or the arrays so the first one is the paragraph tag the p dot paragraph class and the second one also 
the paragraph class. So if I will now go again to Visual Studio Code, or if you will now console dot log element dot length, then it will give you the length of two because now there are two paragraph tags, the one and the two, and and it will show us the console dot log that the length is equals to the two. So after this. If I want to uh, apply some styles with it, like for example, if I want to apply a font weight like the element, element at the position of zero dot style, and it will be a uh, style dot font weight, then it will be equals to the bold. So if I will now save, then if I should now see, then you will see the elements is now the bold. If I will now go again to Visual Studio Code, and if I will now apply some another style to the first element, element at the i dot style, and it will be dot uh, uh, font style equals to the italic. So then you will see the first paragraph will be in the bold and the second paragraph will be in the italic style. So then you will see in the bold and in the italic style. The next one is the documents dot get elements by the tag name. So about this, so it will select all the elements by their tag names and it will return the array like object. So if I will now go to VS code once again. So if I will now comment this out first and then if I will now create a new space for the select elements by tag name so then it would be so by tag name if i will now declare a new let and the element equals to the document dot get element by the tag name so then it would be the tag name and inside this if i will now do the tag name as paragraph and then it will consider this tag name as the paragraph tag so if i will now save it and if i will now just console.log again array like objects there so after the console.logging in this way you will see the a is not if oh sorry it's the element so if I will now save, then you will see again there is a collection or the arrays. So if you will print it length, so then you will see there will be two because there are two elements. So if you will declare once again the paragraph tag, then if I will now save, then you will see now there are three tags. So if you want to apply some styles on it, we can do the same as we did in the in the classes. So if I will now apply some style like the first paragraph, like the elements at the right position of the zero uh, dot color or the uh, style dot background color equals to the gray if now you will save then the first paragraph elements o x uh, one uh, the element at the red zero style will be the gray so if i will now save then you will see now the color is gray the background color is gray and if i will now apply some styles now if i want to apply styles to every paragraph element then then it would be in the for loop like for let i of the array like the element and then inside it if I will now do like the i in a text equals to the updated text. If I will now save, then you will see both will have the updated text. And if the color would be like if the i dot style dot color and it would be the uh, like the green, then the color will be of green. Now see these are the updated text so these are how can we use selecting elements by their tag names so now the next one is the documents dot query selector all so about this it will select all the elements which matches the specified css selectors and it will return an array like object so the css selectors like the star or the ids or the class so it will select all the element which matches a specified css selector 
and it will return an array like object so about the document dot uh, query selector all it will be if i will now comment this out then if i will now declare a new list below the button like the ul and it will be inside this it will be the li so about this if i will now declare like the one or two li again and it will be again the three so if i will now go here and if i will now create a new tag here like this uh, it will be selecting elements if i will now go and if i will now select the documents like the let elements equals to document dot query selector all so then it would be the ul or the li so if i would do the li so then if i will now go here and after this if i will now select only the zero element of the li like the element will be the element at the zero dot style uh, dot then it will be like the the background color and it will be like the gray if i will now save then you will see the element zero i there will be the background gray for the element zero it will select the all css selectors like if you want to do with the paragraph then you will see the paragraph colors will be the gray so these are about how can we use the query selector all in the javascript so if i will now do this like if i will now move this again to li and i want to remove this move this rounded icons there from the list so then it would be like the from we will use a new for loop for let i of the array or like the element and the element would be now and then it will be i dot type because the list dot type will be equals to the none if i will now save then you will see there will be no more any squares there or circles there before the list so these are about how can we use the query selector all in the javascript and it will select all the elements in the array so thank you guys for watching the video and i hope you will like the video and guys please subscribe to our channel if you are new